Bridge number one, popularly known as Canal Bridge, is located over extremely busy Sialda Yard, just 800 meters from the Sialda railway station. Bridge number one was an open web girder type bridge having a span of 33.5 meters. It was constructed in the year 1862, thus being an early steel girder. The work of regirdering of this bridge was sanctioned in the year 2005-06. The regirdering work was completed in the year 2007-08. The new plate girders were inserted by cutting the cross girders of the existing open web girder bridge. The remaining structure, however, could not be dismantled due to various reasons. While lockdown due to COVID-19 posed many challenges, Eastern Railway Corona Warriors saw it as an opportunity to execute a long pending safety work. Dismantling of bridge number no. 1 was a technically complex and a challenging work for many reasons and site constraints. The bridge spans a canal and a road on either bank of the canal. The bridge is an RUV as well as a waterway. The bridge has four main lines on it, namely up suburban line, down suburban line, up main line and down main line. Thus, the bridge is the heart of the Sialda Yard. On the southern end of the bridge, there is another bridge, semi-through type girder, which has one track, line number 5, over it. Above site constraints implied that road cranes could be deployed on one side of the bridge only. This was also required because one line had to be kept at least diesel fit as remaining four lines were to be blocked. Another constraint was narrow road width of 3 meters on either side of the canal where crane had to be placed and propping had to be done but consolidated ground was not available. The challenge posed by the bridge was not only civil engineering in nature but also from the TRD point of view. The OHE arrangement over the bridge was tramway type. There was double contact wire support through V-clamps on steady wire. For crane working, OHE lowering had to be done. The OHE was run regulated in this section. The OHE arrangement was taking support from the girder bridge. The clear distance between the TRD mast on either side of the bridge was 72 meters, whereas in unregulated OHE section, only 30 meter span was allowed. The solution to the problem was arrived by making OHE mast foundation on the bridge pier. Thus, the span was divided into 30 meters and 42 meter span. The OHE foundation was made but the mast could not be grouted because the mast grouting could be done only after the crane working as it would have infringed crane operations. This posed a unique challenge that a mechanism was needed to grout the TRD mast in such a way that they should be able to take load in shortest possible time. The planning started during lockdown and all the prerequisites like calling of tender, finalization of tender and approval of drawing was done in a record time of 33 days. As per approved scheme, the CC crib supports were given at various nodes of the girder bridge. The CC cribs were supported on sandbags filled on the canal bed. Two numbers 150 ton road cranes were deployed for dismantling of the bridge. Another two numbers 150 tons road cranes were kept as standby. The bridge comprised of five number trusses each weighing approximately 40 tons and the whole bridge weighed 250 tons. Dismantling of the trusses The cross bracings of the first two truss were gasket and removed by the road crane, leaving the portal bracings and sway bracings intact. Then, each road crane would hold one half of the truss. The first truss was gasket into two parts and one half was lifted by each road crane and placed on the ground. The same procedure was followed for the second truss also. The third truss was cut into four parts as the crane radius and boom length had increased. Dismantling of the fourth and fifth truss was the most critical part because theoretically once the fourth truss was dismantled, there would be no support for fifth truss. Therefore, during dismantling of the fourth and fifth truss, two railway cranes were deployed to hold each truss. While the railway cranes held each truss, each of the 4th and 5th truss was cascut member by member and removed by the road cranes. After dismantling of trusses was complete, 
the TRD mast were erected and epoxy grouting was done to enable load transfer in a matter of few hours. Two TTC upright were erected on both sides. Stringing of head span and cross span wing was done on two upright to support OHE on four lines. During the entire work, the OHE lowering was done in 10 hours. The dismantling of the bridge was completed in 88 hours and OHE put back was done in 16 hours. Thus, the total work was completed in a block of 114 hours. The work was executed from 28th of May to 1st of June and Amphan had struck Kolkata just a week before disrupting preparatory activities. Even during the block, there were continuous rains and gusty winds which led to stoppage of work for more than 24 hours as during rain it would become extremely risky for the workers to move on the steel girder bridge especially accessing the top cord. To add to the problems, one road crane failed during the block. It had to be taken out from the site and a spare crane had to be deployed. This led to additional loss of 8 hours. Yet, undeterred by the weather conditions and the mechanical failure, the team finished the work, ensuring safety of all men and material and observing all COVID-19 precautions. Sialda station handles approximately 300 pairs of trains per day. If this work was done on a regular day, it would have led to cancellations of more than 500 trains. The railway's team, comprising of officers and staff of engineering, TRD and mechanical department and the agency's Adhunik Constructions team displayed exemplary commitment and dedication, thereby enabling completion of a long-pending safety work successfully.